So we all know the D-Rex is a killing machine that was able to crush a helicopter in its six limbs. But if we dropped it into the real Triassic period, wrong air is going to kill it in six hours. So could the D-Rex actually survive the Triassic period? Let's find out. Picture this nightmare waking up in the worst place possible. The D-Rex opens its eyes to a world that wants it dead immediately. Not eventually, but right now. Its first breath, complete disaster. Air has the wrong amounts of everything. Too little of what it needs and too much of what kills it. This thing evolved when oxygen was pushing 25%. That is a huge difference. Triassic air wasn't just low on oxygen. It was loaded with carbon dioxide. In fact, it was loaded with three to five times more than what the D-Rex genetics expected. Every breath floods its bloodstream with CO2. This triggers something called respiratory acidosis, which is a fancy way of saying its blood turns acidic and its brain starts shutting down. Confusion, dizziness, eventually un consciousness all from breathing the wrong air but wait it gets stupider the temperature in the triassic regularly hit over 100 degrees fahrenheit no shade and no relief just endless crushing heat the d-rex would run hot internally because it inherited the t-rex's metabolism because the t-rex was a high performance engine constantly burning fuel and this would work great in the milder cretaceous period drop it into the triassic heat it immediately starts cooking from the inside out there is no way to cool it down down. Humans will sweat, a dog would pant, and the D-Rex would just overheat until its organs give up. Dehydration would kick in within hours. Then, organ failure. You're probably thinking by now that all this is very scientific and boring. And fair point. Let me put it in a different way. Imagine showing up to a party where the air conditioning is broken. Instead of being mildly uncomfortable, every breath slowly kills you. Instead of leaving the party, you're stuck there forever while wearing a winter coat made of fur on fire. Now, let's talk about why having six limbs makes everything worse those extra limbs aren't just weird looking they're energy vampires every calorie gets wasted feeding body parts that just hang there looking freaky this is the deep rex existence every step becomes a full body workout just to stay upright and meanwhile the world smells completely wrong because the d-rex brain expects to smell flowering plants grass and familiar prey animals instead it would be getting hit with confer resin fern spores and the musty scent of cicads it's wandering through a landscape full of potential potential food while being completely unable to recognize any of it is actually edible. You know what this reminds me of? Showing up hungry to a foreign restaurant where you can't read the menu and everything looks suspicious. Except instead of maybe ordering something weird and regretting it, you literally starve to death because you can't identify food. The visual confusion is just as bad. Triassic plants look nothing like Cretaceous plants. The D-Rex would be expecting broad leafy trees and colorful flowers. Instead, it gets stubby conifers and endless ferns. It's always with the damn fern in the Triassic. Its predator vision keeps scanning for prey that fit its mental templates, large herbivores with specific shapes and movement patterns. But Triassic animals move differently, look differently, and act differently. The D-Rex brain keeps rejecting them as not food even while it's starving. And within the first few hours, the thing is already in deep trouble. Breathing problems, overheating, dehydration, energy drained from useless limbs, and complete sensory confusion. And we haven't even gotten to the part where it meets the local predators. Meet Sarosuchus, 23 feet of pure Triassic efficiency, and it's been perfecting the art of killing things for millions of years. The D-Rex would show up thinking it's hot stuff. Big mistake. See, Sarosuchus doesn't waste energy on massive bone-crushing bites, and it doesn't overheat in desert conditions. It just walks up to prey, grabs it with perfectly adequate bite force, and strips the meat off efficiently. D-Rex inherited all of this T-Rex dominance programming. Roar loud, establish territory, make everyone afraid. But roar Roaring while gasping for air? Not intimidating. The Sarasuchus would just go back to eating. It wouldn't even bother moving away. That's the level of threat assessment happening here. This gets worse when you consider the energy economics. The D-Rex burns through calories just existing thanks to those useless arms and overheating problems. And Sarasuchus operates lean and efficient. It's built for the environment it lives in. It takes what it wants when it wants it. Competition isn't even the right word here. You can't compete with someone who's playing a completely different game. The smaller predators make this even more obvious. See low prices. Packs cruise around like they own the place. They're fast, smart, and they work together. The D-Rex would see these wolf-sized hunter and think easy prey. Wrong again. These guys learn survival in the harshest conditions Earth has to offer. They've got patience, strategy, and more importantly, they've got numbers. While the D-Rex is busy having another breathing crisis, See low prices. Packs are already evaluating the situation. Big animal, clearly sick, moving wrong, 
definitely dying. Perfect scavenging opportunity if they just wait it out. They start following at a distance, not attacking, but just hovering, the way vultures circle something that's about to become dinner. Now, the D-Rex has a new problem. Every time it stops to rest, which is constantly because of the overheating situation, these smaller predators get a little closer, testing boundaries, seeing how much fight is left in the big weird thing. The psychological pressure alone would break most animals. It recognizes the hunting patterns, but it can't do anything about it because it's too busy not dying from basic biological functions. And here's where the really sad part kicks in. D-Rex finally gets desperate enough to try hunting something. It spots a Platosaurus minding its own business, which is a big herbivore and it looks like food. It would charge in with all the grace of a drunk person trying to run upstairs. It's six limbs going everywhere, wheezing like an asthmatic bulldog, making more noise than an average construction site. And Platosaurus takes one look at this mess approaching and just walks away. Not running, not panicking, just casually leaving because clearly this thing isn't a real threat. The thing was about as threatening as an angry chihuahua with a limp. But let's say the D-Rex gets lucky and finds some animal it's already hurt or sick and manages to make a kill through pure persistence rather than skill. Now what? Well, dinner time brings a whole new set of problems. Every successful predator in the area just got a dinner invitation. Sarosuchus shows up first and it doesn't ask for permission. It just starts eating the best parts while maintaining casual eye contact with D-Rex. And what's the D-Rex gonna do? Challenge a perfectly adapted killing machine while suffering from heat exhaustion and oxygen deprivation? Good luck with that. The smaller predators would move in next. They all get their share before D-Rex figures out how to coordinate six limbs well enough to defend its own kill. By the time D-Rex gets to eat, it's lucky to get scraps. This is the ecosystem rejecting a foreign object, not through violence or dramatic confrontations, but through simple economic reality. The D-Rex costs more to operate than it can possibly earn in this time period. The numbers don't add up, and nature doesn't care about movie villain credentials. This is the harsh reality of evolution. Animals that cannot get more energy than they put out, die. They go extinct. The established predators aren't even being mean about it. They're just doing what worked for millions of years before this genetic accident showed up. They're efficient, practical, and sustainable. The D-Rex is burning through its energy reserves trying to figure out how to be a predator in a world where it doesn't fit. The real killer isn't competition or starvation. It's that it's literally designed to fall apart. Remember how this thing is a failed clone? Yeah, that matters in the Triassic period. InGen didn't dump the D-Rex on an island because it was too scary. They dumped it because their science project was broken. The genetic code is scrambled, developmental instructions are mixed up, and basic biological functions are running on corrupted data. Every cell in its body is operating operating with faulty instructions. The heart would be pumping irregularly, the liver would be processing toxins incorrectly, and the kidneys would be failing to filter waste properly. Brain chemistry would be completely unbalanced. The joints are grinding against each other wrong. The bones are growing in directions they were never supposed to go, and muscles are pulling against tendons that can't handle the load. Chronic pain doesn't even begin to cover it. Every movement sends wrong signals through a nervous system that's already confused about which limbs belong where. Take a look at freak mutations that have happened in animals. The one that I can think of is the famous two-headed sheep. These animals with these large genetic mutations do not survive very long. Why? Because their code is all wrong. Now, we don't actually have code, but we have DNA, which is the blueprint for building life. And when your DNA is wrong for the species that you're trying to be, things aren't going to work correctly. Honestly, it's impressive the D-Rex has survived this long, judging by how fundamentally wrong it actually is. Like, sleep becomes impossible. Pain medications, not that there is any, wouldn't work on genetic errors. And nothing can fix DNA that's been scrambled beyond recognition. F stress hormones would be flooding the system constantly. Its fight or flight response would be stuck permanently on. And adrenaline would be wearing out receptors that were already built wrong. Let's not even talk about the cortisol levels high enough to shut down immune function in entirely. And speaking of immune systems, that's where things start to get really, really ugly. Because the D-Rex immunity was designed for late Cretaceous germs, viruses that no longer exist, parasites from a completely different world. Now, this thing was already struggling in the main day Jurassic World series. Take this way back to the Triassic, and we don't even have those diseases around yet. Triassic microbes would be aliens to this immune system. Its first drink of water introduces thousands of pathogens that the body can't even identify let alone fight off. Every breath pulls in spores and bacteria that trigger massive allergic reactions. Infection sets in immediately. Not one infection, dozens. Respiratory tracts, 
tract, digestive system, open wounds from all that stumbling around on malformed legs. Everything gets invaded by organisms that shouldn't even be able to survive in the same century. The body tries to mount a defense. Fever spikes, white blood cells mobilize, inflammatory responses kick into overdrive, but none of it works because the genetic instructions for fighting disease are as scrambled as everything else. The kidneys can't process the toxin load from failed immune responses. The liver would be overwhelmed trying to clean blood full of cellular debris. The heart would be struggling to pump through arteries that were never built to handle this level of inflammation. The brain, already confused about basic motor functions, starts getting unreliable chemical signals from organs that are shutting down. Behavior becomes erratic. It wouldn't be aggressive hunting behavior, but panic responses from an animal that can't understand why its own body is attacking it. The D-Rex isn't just dying from its environmental factors. It's dying from being assembled incorrectly, which brings us to the final 24 hours of its life. Because the final collapse happens fast, and not movie fast, real fast. By the time fever hits 108 degrees, the internal temperature regulation just gives up. There would be no dramatic moment, no warning signs. The system simply stops trying to cool itself down, and dehydration reaches the point where blood turns thick. The heart would be pumping sludge instead of fluid. The kidneys would shut down completely, and waste products flood the bloodstream with toxins that would kill a healthy animal in minutes. And those infected wounds from stumbling around, they've gone septic. It's got bacteria spreading through a circulatory system that can't fight back. It would have blood poisoning racing towards the brain through arteries already damaged by chronic inflammation. Its six limbs would start seizing independently. Its nervous system finally admitting it can't coordinate this many limbs. Each arm twitches in its own rhythm. Neural pathways firing random signals at muscles that stopped listening days ago. Its respiratory system would make one last attempt to function. Its lungs inflating and deflating irregularly, and oxygen absorption drops to almost nothing. So carbon dioxide levels spike high enough to trigger hallucinations. Then the brain chemistry completely falls apart. Its consciousness becomes unreliable, its awareness flickering in and out, but gets fed corrupted information from failing organs. It would have confusion replacing aggression. Pain becomes the only constant sensation. It would have every nerve ending screaming signals that make no sense to a mind already overwhelmed by genetic errors. And the massive bite force that made this thing legendary, its jaw muscles would be too weak to close properly. Its teeth would be chattering from involuntary muscle spasms, and the weapon that once destroyed helicopters can barely chew its own tongue. Balance would become impossible. Six limb coordination was already a nightmare when healthy. Now it's pure chaos. The thing topples over and can't get back up. It just lies there twitching while organ systems shut down one by one, and smaller predators move in for the finale. Those Zilophysis. packs that have been falling for days finally get their meat. They approach carefully at first, then realize there's no fight left. The great villain of Jurassic World Rebirth gets eaten alive by animals the size of large dogs. It's too weak to resist. It's too sick to care. Its consciousness would be fading while smaller teeth strip meat from its bones that are still technically alive. There would be no final roar, no dramatic death scene, just biological systems failing in the exact order you'd expect from something assembled this badly. That's how this ultimate predator dies in the real Triassic, not from epic battles or dramatic showdowns, but from being fundamentally incompatible with basic existence. Sometimes evolution isn't about survival of the fittest. Sometimes it's just about not being assembled wrong in the first place. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and comment down below which other animals who tried to survive the different Jurassic ages. If you want to watch another video just like this one, click the video on screen now.